it would appear that our cheerleading section is here. Ready? Okay. Hey guys, what's up fish heads? TGIF. Today, today, today. Finally. Here we go. Well, fish heads, I had every intention of not running the AC portion of my ventilation unit while I was doing this video, but I think that's going to be impossible. It's already in the 90s. We're going to have heat indexes around 110 today. It's going to be super hot. It's really humid. So the only way that I can get through this awesome spray session with you guys and not sweat to the oldies in here is by having a little AC. So if it's a little noisy, there's some background noise, you have my apologies up front. But today, 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 folks, Friday, we are going to do something super cool with this trout clash. I've already got the eyes taped. Let me bring that in close for you guys. You guys can see that the eyes are taped off and the tape has been tucked in. And I did that before I shot this video this morning, like just before, because I don't want the tape on those eyes any longer than it has to be. So obviously the first thing that we're going to be doing is throwing some white on here. Got some opaque white. It's already pretty much shaken up. Let's put a little bit in the cup. Actually a lot in the cup because we need a pretty good covering. Now I already got this, um, I got this bait sanded. So he had already taken some, some pretty good steps to get me started out and it, on June 9th, he was able to discern what pattern he wanted and he wanted something that he's been seeing me do for the Buca Bull Shads, which is some pretty cool bluegill pattern. So he did not specify which, I've done about three or four of them for various clients in the last couple of months. So what I've decided to do for him is just give him his own unique bluegill spray. And I know spray and white can be kind of like watching paint dry, so getting this on as quickly as possible, making sure the coat is even. We're going to set that to dry, and I'm going to show you the pattern we're going to be doing today for Mr. Lanning. Now this is the pattern we're going to be following today. It's got a little bit more of a bold coloring on the chest, which is fine. A little bit of orange and like a darker goldenrod yellow and then some more pale muted colors throughout the main part of the body. Uh, it's got that icy light blue, which we're gonna be mimicking with some opaque. That's a pretty good match if you guys can see that. And let's get this up here. Let's show you that right now. Folks, when you're dealing with larger baits, the one thing that you do want to be careful on is how much you're tilting this. So as much as I can today, I'm going to be concentrating on actually spraying while it's standing on the stand on the bench. Um, I'm going to try and minimize the amount of tilting and flipping because it is a heavier bait. And the last thing you want to do is get almost through your pattern and then just have the whole thing fall off and wet paint and you got to just hit the reset button. So we don't want that today. So I am going to be spraying, which means I'm going to move these off to the side. I'm going to, the baby bull shads that's coming up in another spray session, probably sometime early next week. I know I've been promising a lot, you guys, and I apologize. It is just, you know me, busy, busy. Got to get the orders done as well as give you guys the most amount of content that's useful to you as I can. I'm going to set that off there. I have got paper set up to spray off any excess paint. Got pretty much everything moved off to the side and we're ready to rock and roll. I'm choosing this pattern because it's kind of a cross between the muted patterns that I've been doing and the bolder stuff that I've been doing. I am going to mute these colors down just a little bit because he did not indicate which of the patterns that I've been doing on these bucas he'd like to get. So I'm going to try and give him a unique blend of all of that. And I'm going to do as much detailing on the belly 
as I can with those dots. So we're going to keep the belly as white as possible. We're going to move up into a very light yellow and work our way towards some gold and oranges and some oranges and reds. And then we'll do either a red violet or some sort of um, darker violet for up here. These lines are almost black, so what I'm probably going to use is this Detail Payne's Gray, which is not quite black, it's not quite purple, it's not quite anything, sepia. So I might do a little blend with this, but that's pretty much going to be my, <clears throat> my detailing color. And then a straight black for the ear flap, and maybe just a couple of points along the edges. I am going to add in the pectoral fin and some greens and yellows. I'm going to try and get this as close as I can and maybe just a little more muted. So working with our first color here, I think I'm just going to work with, and that might even be a little bit, but I can mute this down with some, I know, half sentences are good. When you can follow me. I can make this a little bit less bold with some pearl white or a little bit of just sprayed white on that. Bring my pressure down. Base coats, whites, I can normally do right around uh, 35, 40. Just kind of do a little jagged pattern here. from the back and do about the same, leaving that belly white. Now I can go ahead and put a little bit of yellow on the face because there are some greens in that, which means when I add some blues, some of that ice blue, it is going to turn it green. Just remember your color wheel when you guys are blending colors. If you want a green on the face, you can have yellow as long as you add some blue in. And if you're working with wet on wet paint, which we're going to do on this particular project, probably easiest if you just do your light colors and then your darker colors and then your darker colors. So that is going to do it maybe just a little bit darker on the tail since we're going to add a little orange into that. The next thing we're going to get out of the way is our orange right through here and on the, the chest area and that's kind of a fade in from about maybe half an inch behind the gill plate up towards the nose and just the slightest bit on that tail. Not a whole lot, just enough to notice it. And get a little heavier through here. And I know that I said we're going to move this as little as possible, however, we do kind of need to work on the underside of this just for a second. Should do it. To that orange, I'm going to add just a few drops of red. I'm going to spray it through just for a second to kind of get it to blend. When you turn on your airbrush and you pull down and pull back on the trigger, it's going to pull and, and siphon whatever color you've got on top in, and it'll sort of kind of blend for you. Now remember, it's not as important to do anything up in here because this is going to get repainted there's just a few hints of orange in this, but we're going to mostly go over this with some greens and some blues. So a lot of the stuff, the, the reds and oranges that you're seeing on the gill plate, that's going to disappear as we build and build onto this. Now before we do anything else, I'm going to come back at an angle shooting down the front of this bait and kind of white can serve as our eraser here, if that makes any sense. 
and I'm angling down so that the spray goes away from the body of the bait, which does make a tremendous difference. We also want to angle, kind of get that blend in there. Now, if you guys can see it, we've readjusted to where we can get in those greens and those blues on the face and the gill plate and still have that real lush red and orange on the throat of this bait. I've decided on a basic red violet to start off and if I have to mute that down a little bit I can certainly do that. I'm going to spray very lightly at a bit of a higher pressure which means that I'm going to get some dots. I'm going to get a little bit of, of spray on this which is I'm totally cool with. But we're going to come in, if you guys can see the pattern, you're looking in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to kind of follow along on this. There's very little purple on the back of this tail and then it kind of broadens out as you go along the back. So from here, we're just going to spray the back and then start spraying in just light hints of this. do a little bit darker here just a little bit more there to where we have our desired effect now that is by no means the color that we're going to end up with because we're going to keep blending Kind of get some modeled effects, just some random, throw the rest of that off. And once again, come back with my opaque. Kind of get that going. And then there's just a couple of areas on here where I'd like it a little bit lighter so we're just going to kind of accent it doesn't have to be super perfect because once the dots start to go in it's going to blend everything through a little bit better about like that I'm bringing just a little bit of yellow back into the nose of this bait and into the cheek because it is there and you can see the yellow right through here or if you're looking up there I know it's a tinier picture up here in the corner um, but it's the only way that I can kind of show you guys what I'm doing as I go along but if you guys can see what I'm looking at then that's all the better now we need to get in let's see I think I want some more, to be honest, I want some more white on this. I'm gonna drop back in just a bit of white. Into this area right through here. There is a good bit of white on this and I don't want that red and orange to be overbearing on this bait. So we're gonna kind of recoat that white I think I'm happy with that. I'm being very careful because I, if I'm not careful with this then I can flip this off because it's a fairly heavy On bait. to the yellow. We're going to do a little bit in the face here and again I'm getting in all the random color detail before I do the actual lining and dot matrix and detail on this bait. Also coming from the top down, I'm going to spray just a little bit of, this is a leaf green. It's a 5115 leaf green, Createx transparent. And it should, since we're still working with wet on wet, it should, should be blending pretty easily onto this. And we're going to build the dark up and back, but we still need to put on the basics of this first 
So I'm gonna get that, and on that, I'm still working in greens here. I wanna add a little olive green. And if I don't like this olive green from the onset, I can make my own and uh, give it a little bit more bluish. But I think I should be able to just kind of blend some dark into this. Now you guys might not pick up the subtleties of the change as we build on camera, but I assure you it's there. So we're blending from a yellow to a lighter green to this olive green. I'm gonna come back with some moss green. I'm gonna stay on camera on this one because we're gonna keep these other little bit of paint we've got left. I'm only putting a couple of drops in at a time. Because we don't want, number one, we don't want too much paint because it'll just start looking really strange. Now you can start to see that darken up. And now we can start building down the back of this. Okay, now for my next trick, my favorite blending to dark color, which is that Detail Black Magenta. 0075. So we're going to start with the back and move our way down. Make sure you guys are in frame. And this is where we start to, to pull the, the darker color into this bait. It's already starting to darken up really well on the nose and the face. And if you shoot top down on a bait that has a lot of mold signatures like this one does, you'll get your own without even having to put any kind of a stencil on here to do a gill plate. You're gonna start seeing those accents come in. And I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth on this as I move down the bait. And I'm also gonna spray down at an angle. Try to be mindful that I have some whites and yellows, which is still very much a part of this bait. Back of that gill plate. Some of that. Kind of move into the nose. You can see just a little bit in that nose. So you can see that there's some really nice signatures that are starting to come in. These accents here. There we go. Maybe just a little bit more on this side. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of blue in that while I still have my black magenta. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can blend this dark down into light. Do I have anything left in this bottle? Yeah, a little bit. I have a brand new bottle. I'm just being a miser and trying not to open it. I'm going to pull the pressure way down at this point. Make sure I have the right colors coming out of here. Because now we're going to just start to hit a little bit on the nose. Just start to see that blend come through. That's going to look nice. But it's a little dark, right? That's fine. Because we're going to come back with a mask, which basically means I'm gonna do a hand cut stencil and actually cut in all of that opaque sky blue. Now, you guys always ask me to let you know when I'm heat setting. This is the first time I'm doing any kind of heat setting on this bait since I put the opaque white on. And I don't even think that I heat set the opaque white. Heat set. So before we get back into cutting a little stencil out, which is gonna be super easy, just like we would be doing for the gill plate, which I am probably gonna cut a little stencil out for that. But I wanna put just a little bit of yellow back into the edge of this cheek, moving back towards where this ear flap would be. Not a whole bunch. Uh, probably the lightest yellow I have, which would be this transparent. Not, but maybe two drops 
that's low enough make sure the spray is coming out right I'm just gonna do a little bit there kind of goes up to the eye and then do the same thing on the other side just to even it up even though we can't see the other side of the fish in this picture we can only imagine that it's there so and then just double check any other spots that might need a little bit of yellow throughout just to try and keep consistent with how this pattern is working out okay now we need to put in this opaque sky blue I think this piece that I already have cut from another project will probably do what I need it to do because it's got an interior area where I can actually lay in this blue and give a nice clean line against this red like you see in the picture and then I can do a little bit of shading when you flip this around. Now there's not a whole lot of dark shading on this bait so I'm not going to get tons and tons of darkness like I normally would on some of the baits that you've seen me do. We're going to kind of try and keep it as natural as I can. Um, I think we have some pretty good stuff here on the skill plate to work with. So let me load in a little bit of opaque blue. I know I really need to open this other bottle but while I've got drops left being the miser that I am and financially conscious like we should all be oh, come on you can do it that might be the end of it so I don't want to get any well I had enough I've got enough ladies and gentlemen she's got enough okay get all this excess crap off the edge of the cup get a good clean line now would be a great time to make sure I don't have a messed up tip since we're gonna start doing detailing that's something you guys should always check just make sure you have a real clean spray line not bad not bad this back on doesn't appear to be blocked I don't have a lot of there we go all right now on this I am going to tilt this slightly you know what let's do this side first one of the things that you want to be aware of as you go through something with a larger bait on helping hands is the weight distribution of the base so if you move your helping hand over where the heaviest part of the base is, you're less likely to tip it than if you brought it over this way where the horseshoe is. Just something to think about. Again, be super duper careful. But now you see how we've got that clean line, just like we've got in that picture. And that's because I'm working with an inverted stencil as opposed to going around the outer edge. So the stencil is actually holding the paint in on this one. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. You got that nice clean line and yes I am going to come back and darken that up just a little bit with some shading but I do want to heat set that because we're going to do you can see it 
there is a little bit of an internal line that goes up this way. So I want to get that in there too. And then we flipped it over. And just, just to get that little bit of extra detailing on this bait. Let's see, we're, I'm aiming here. So that we don't have a bunch of spray that lands on the bait. And we can always come back over with green. I do have a little bit of overspray on the face. I really don't think that's a big deal, folks. Uh, matter of fact, let me flip this back around so that when I don't tip it, and that's one thing that's also good about these helping hands is that you can actually turn this bait to the other side just to get it back over where you need it to be. So the weight distribution is a little more even. And we'll come back and do this. go. That's not bad. And then maybe aim down and do just a little more as we go towards the nose. Aim down and do a little more on the other side towards the nose. And then I'll come back over with just a little bit of green just to kind of, matter of fact, I'm going to dot this give it a more natural I'm going to add just about two drops of this tropical green back in kind of shoot top down finish it with that black magenta bring this down the nose okay While I have black magenta in there, I'm going to go super detail on you guys, which I normally don't do, but some of you guys asked to see it, so I'm certainly not going to not show you. Um, but if you're not at this level, it's okay. It's all relative. I want to actually feel this bait to make sure I can set it down, because I'm going to have to. We're going to have to go side by side on this. We're at the point now where we're going to add in these dots. Now, here's the thing, folks. If you can see the dots through the stripes, then you always want to do your dots first on your bait before you put the lines in. Does that make sense? Because they're there, they're kind of underneath. That's the way you have to look at it and think about it as you spray it. Now, luckily for us, we have a lot of different creature feature stencils. Several of these will work really, really well for this particular pattern. So I'm going to pick a couple. Let's see what we can do with it here. Now I actually almost like this snake skin. Almost. But that might be some after detailing. That's way too small. What do we got here? I like these as well, but I, you know what? Here we go. Winter, winter chicken dinner. I think that'll do. At least for the purposes that I want. I'm hoping this will do well. And because I can see through, and you don't want too dark of a pattern and you kind of want to go random with this and then I need to lift this up as I'm moving it in various places I 
just figured I'd try something a little different. I like that. Gonna use this. So which one am I using here? It does not say. Reptile, more than likely. But because the dots are lined up so well, I thought that it might be an excellent interpretation for bluegill dots. Can do harder some spots and a little bit lighter others. There we go. And just a little bit different. Now see that's starting to pop up. Be mindful. Just readjust that on there. Use a different one for the upper back. Along the spine. Now, if you don't want this super bold, and you may not, then you can always come and mute this. We're going to add a little bit of pearlescent additive and a little bit of pearl white just to kind of tone this down a wee bit as we finish this bait. Now that we've done all of our stenciling, I'm going to add just a little bit of dark shadowing around this eye, both sides. Kind of give it a little bit more definition. Let's see, I think we're just about ready for some stripes. I have just enough pearl white in this paint cup to keep me from getting in trouble. But I want to mute these lines down just a little bit. And are we clogged? No. Okay. Maybe a little. Might be a little clog in that. We can certainly work with it though. Pearl white is your friend. Does a really good job muting colors down. And you can kind of specify and aim it where you want it. And yeah, I've got a couple little slops. I don't care about that because we're gonna have lines through there. Now for the lines, I'm gonna do rough cut. So as we look at this before I put the lines in, of course we wanna heat set this now that that's there. And the pectoral fins are gonna be the last thing we do on this. Yeah, that's looking really good. Okay. Rough cut fins. I will probably have enough of these to the end of time. So I bought thousands of packs of these when I started out. I think. Just kind of going in a little Kind of like that. Maybe one more. I might like that the best. Let's pull the excess fringe off of that. 
I like that. Kind of represents this pretty well. Be creative, folks. We can kind of do the same thing on this bait. It's just going to take up a little bit more real estate. So if we plan these out as best we can, we're looking at one being shorter behind the ear flap. The ear flap is going to come out to about here, but the ear flap is going to be one of the last things that we do. Ear flap and the fin, and then that final gill plate shading. So we count off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we'll pretend that's there, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. On the actual fish, the spacing gets closer together because it kind of funnels down to the tail on a trout shaped body. Obviously that's not going to be the case. So I'm going to do what I normally do. Just think I might do it with a purple instead of a black marker. And do one, two, three, four, five, six, jump seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Why do I do that, you say? So that I can see this dot on the other side. It's barely visible because it's purple, but I can see it on the other side, and that's going to give me a good gauge as to how to meet those up on the other side of this. Does that make sense? It will. I promise. All right. You know, I kind of want to mix. Now let's see how it goes with the black magenta. That's kind of the color it is, but I might drop just a little bit of Payne's Gray in here, or maybe a warmer brown. Maybe I'll do a little detail sepia. Junk out of it. I hope you're enjoying what I'm doing so far. I'm definitely enjoying doing this for you guys. Probably too much. Just a whole bunch just came out in there. So probably need to mix this. And it's probably now going to be less transparent than I wanted it to be. We'll see what it looks like when we get it on some paper. That's kind of dark. Not too bad. It's going to change. So let's give it a shot. Starting out here. Whoa. Catch yourself before you blast it. second one and because this is so flexible it's pretty easy just to line that up three and I'm gonna try and trail off as much as I can on these because the lines do get faded as you get towards the belly.
always want to wipe this down from time to time. You can kind of move this around as you see fit. we go and we want to finish this too so I want to come back around and just kind of run that in run it below the gill plate Don't worry, we're gonna mute it. Gonna mute it. Some of you guys are gonna be like, mute it? What does that mean? Jennifer. Always wipe that down. You don't want any buildup that you can kind of pull across that bait. None at all, if you can help it. Just fade that down. We're going to go backwards. It really, with this, it's, it's whatever you guys are comfortable doing. wipe that down and I'm kind of getting into the brown more than I wanted to it's not going to match up with the other side so we're going to dump that sepia off and just reload with straight black magenta if you notice a little bit of color change when you're doing any kind of detailing just stop stop what you're doing and load the right stuff back in I thought that I was in a place where I could blend it, but that sepia is so much different than the black magenta. And the black magenta is really the only color that makes sense for line in a bluegill. At least to me. Might not be for you. I don't know. That's, uh, that's you guys. We all have different approaches to things. Now you see how much buildup is on that? See how wet that card is? Just continue to pull that off. That's why you always want to have as much scrap paper around as you can. We are down to just the last couple bits here. And just, uh, I know I haven't been talking a whole lot during the detail process. I figure most of you guys understand the detailing. Uh, when you're working with any kind of a stencil or mask, you want to put more paint on the actual stencil than you do on the bait. And that's what's going to give you that fade out. And then just a little on that side. All right. Then we're going to come back and work our way through. All I'm doing is just flipping it up. And it kind of gives you, I don't know if you guys notice it, but it kind of gives you a mirror image, which is pretty fun to work with. Go. 
there, folks. Almost there. Now, while you still have this in the chamber, let's do the top and hide that line. We made dots, right? So we're just going to hide that. Oh, do I have any paint left? Yep. Bring the pressure back up. Hide and mask and hide and mask. And there we go. I changed my mind. Before we heat set this, I'm going to blend off some of this pearl white into here. Just mute those colors down. Really want that white on the belly. And I might want just a little more. Let's see what happens here. Just a bit brighter orange on the throat here. Just a little bit of red, like two drops, real quick. Just because it is so very red. On that bait. It's just super red. But it's also blue up to the back of the chin, blue and white. So I'm going to add just a little bit of blue in there as well. careful not to tip this over. Bring it up like this. That ought to do it. I just want the tiniest, tiniest bit of accent on these gill plates. Probably going to be easier for you guys to see this. If I lay this down, I have um, heat set the bait. Now just just the slightest bit, make sure I got some decent spray coming out. Let's see here. And I can I can soften that with a little more blue. Do the other side. Ah, that might be okay. I might not need to soften it too bad or too much. Come up here, just barely get it. Make that even out. Good, 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 good. Cutting the ear flap is easy. Just make a semicircle. And then be mindful of where your gill plate is going to be. There we go. 
something like that and then just pop that out now if you notice on this one folks there is no white on either side of that it's just plain black so we're gonna work to the advantage of where the line is where our shadow falls put one in there heat set both sides Second verse, same as the first on the other side. And there we go. Now for the last part of this, I love using Russ's stencils on that fen wheel. I think this is gonna require something just a little bit bigger, a little bit longer for this clash. So I am going to start with that C, that backward C. And then run like that. And then just kind of go like that. I think that'll work, I think. Kind of looks like that, and I kind of need more. Like that. That might do it. I think I can work with that. So the best way to, to tell you to do this that I know is just to spray your opaque colors. Now if you look at the picture, this pectoral fin is set directly underneath the ear flap so we're going to do that on this bait as best we can the yellow that I'm choosing is a sunrise yellow need to make sure we're completely clean there and that we're not blasting this out because this is also a pretty fine detail so we need to get underneath of this as best we can at least be uniform because this shape is a lot different you got a little bit more real estate wide wise like height wise on a bluegill than you do here so I might offset it just a little bit so that it starts I could probably use that as a so I'm gonna touch the edge of this stencil to the top of that ear flap and then just gently hit that. Now we've got that, that dirty yellowish color. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Flip this around so that the weight on that base is a little bit more distributed. I hope I'm making sense when I talk today. I hope this has been fairly easy to follow. And again, just to line it up evenly, we're going to touch the edge of this stencil to the top of that ear flap. We'll work our way down from there and get that on. There we go. Now we'll heat set this. Both sides were heat set for about 30 seconds to make sure that we have the best that we can get here. I'm actually gonna lay this down this time. Help you guys maybe see it a little bit better. Make sure we have a low spray, could be a little bit lower. get this back end pretty dark and the edges
come back down from the top make sure you have a good match make sure it fits in that slot real well and then get your back area stencil the top just a little bit on that bottom edge right as rain okay we heat set that now if you have a steady hand and you're good with a pen you can add additional detailing and get those thin thin lines in and you need to have a very thin tip but if you have the steady hand and you want to give it a shot just to add a couple of these All means knock yourself out but there are other ways to do and achieve that it's always a good idea to keep a pair of tweezers handy in the shop or wherever it is that you're working so that if you need to pull off tape without screwing stuff up or maybe gouging your paint job you can do it it's just an easy way that I've found to make that happen. I'll take these off. And that's the beauty about these is that you never take the eyes out. They're set in extremely well on baits like this. You're going to do more harm than good by trying to take it out. So the best thing you can do is just tape over it. Grab an exacto knife if there's any paint that has accidentally gone underneath the tape you can certainly just kind of ease that out now it looks like this has had some scratches to it and before I got to it so all I'm doing is I'm just gently scraping any paint off the edge of that eye. There is the bait. Looking pretty. I will certainly show you guys in better light once we get our clear coat on. Make sure you have all the dust off of this. We're going to start with this base piece here, back towards the tail. I'm just going to load a little bit of clear coat on the tail. You don't need to overload the brush because that's how you'll get drips. Take extra special care around any of the joints or hinges something that you absolutely do not want to get epoxy or clear coat in. Most of you guys know that, but I still get asked all the time. Now this is going to get three coats. You just want to evenly put this on. You want to make sure that you get it all the places that it needs to be and none of the places that it shouldn't. Just work that down and away. And if you need to put a little bit of I know sometimes I just don't finish sentences because I'm so into what I'm doing that I'm not thinking about the words if you need a little extra support you can put an edge down. The other thing is there's a tail that has to go on this so the last thing that you want to do 
Whoa. What the heck was that? Oh, it's a mosquito. How delightful. I hope I killed it. I don't think I did. Man, mosquitoes are bad, bad, bad this year here in Arkansas. They are no joke. They'll carry you off. So just make even strokes with your flat brush. And once you start painting on the same area where you're holding it, work from the bottom up. Work as quickly and accurately as you can. And don't set your hands or your glove onto any areas where you do have paint because you stand a chance of pulling that paint up and you don't want to do that either. So just even strokes all the way around. And the second coat will go a little bit easier than the first. And then just continue to work up. And once you get to a certain point, you'll know, you'll know. Um, take your hands off the bait entirely and use this little hanger to hold on to. And I'm just about at that point now. Just keep working your way up that bait. And it's okay if you get it on your gloves. The gloves are gonna come off. Don't get excess amount of clear coat in the eyes because that'll drip down and it'll leave a drip mark and your customer will be sad and you will lose business. Quickly, accurately, as best you can. Always do at least two coats on stuff like this. Those big bass are going to hit it. And more times than not, it's not going to affect, because these are super thin coats anyways. And then just kind of give it a look over, once over. Any inconsistencies, kind of brush those down. And you'll see them. Just look at it from every angle you can. Keep those even strokes, folks. Folks, I hope I've been able to teach you guys a couple of things today. I hope you've enjoyed watching this Clash 9 repaint for Mr. Lanning. I certainly enjoyed doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. As always, thanks for the view and I really appreciate it. It's great when you guys stop by. I love seeing all your smiling faces. I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers! And happy casting from Jekyll Bates. Of course I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's done. I always do.